Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What another beautiful and awesome day today to always be in the presence of the Lord. Another day right now to always give him the thanks. Another day right now to always give him the praise. Another day right now to always give him the glory. Another day right now to always magnify and shout at his holy name because he is King of Kings and he is Lord of Lords. I don't know about you today, my brothers and sisters, but I need Jesus right now. I need him every second, every minute, every hour of the day. I can't do it without Jesus. I can't make it without Jesus. I'm not going to even front and tell you that I can do it all by myself because I can't. That's why I rely on him each and every day. Because I need him. Because if I think I can do it by myself, I'm going to fall flat on my face. I need Jesus. Do you need Jesus right now, my sisters? Do you need Jesus right now today, my brothers? I just want y'all to be honest with yourself and be real with yourself. Do you need Jesus right now? Because I do. I need him right now. Because he is powerful. And every and anything that you are going through right now, what you are facing right now, just know that the God we serve, the God we praise, he is bigger than your problems. He is bigger than your pain. He is bigger than your hurt. He is bigger than your suffering. He is bigger than your circumstances or your situation that you are going through a face right now. Tell yourself that our God is bigger than what you can go, what you are going through right now. Because he is bigger. He is mighty. He is powerful. Our God is awesome who move mountains. Our God is awesome who love us. Our God is awesome and he wants the best for us. That's why praise is an everyday thing. It's not an on and off switch thing. It's not a seasonal thing. It is an everyday thing. Because the God we serve, the God we praise, he is still on the throne. And he is still performing miracles and wonders each and every day in the mighty name of Jesus. He is still in the healing business and he is still in the blessing business. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. And he is so worthy, so worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, God, come before you peacefully and humbly right now today in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you, Father God, for what you have done and what you're about to do. Father God, there's no place that we'd rather be at right now today, Jesus, but in your house, in your sanctuary. We thank you. We praise you and glorify you. Father God, we thank you, God, for this word that we're about to receive. We thank you, Father God, for this powerful message that's going to keep us full. It's going to keep us satisfied today. We just thank you, Father God, for the many of blessings. We thank you, Father God, for the open doors. We thank you, Father God, for the breakthroughs. We thank you, Father God, for your promises. We thank you, Father God, how things about to start working out for the best for us. Thank you, Father God, because this is our time. This is our year. This is our season. This is our moment. Thank you, Father God, how things about to start manifesting in our life. Oh, Father God, we need you right now. Oh, God, we depend on you right now. God, this is your house, the house that you built on solid ground, the house that you built on solid foundation, the house that cannot be moved, it cannot be shaken, it cannot be bothered by nothing or anyone. Oh, God, we just lift you up right now. Father God, you know exactly what your sons and your daughters are going through. Father God, you know exactly what your sons and your daughters need, not want, but what they need. And God, you are the lever. God, you're going to deliver your son for what he needs. You're going to deliver your daughter for what she needs. And God, we know that you're a God. You don't make no mistakes. And what you bring to your daughter's life is for your daughter. And what you bring to your son's life is for your son. It might not make sense. You might can't even believe what God is about to do. But God is about to show you something, my sisters. God is about to show you something, my brothers. Because he knows exactly what you've been going through. He knows exactly what you've been facing. He knows the pain. He knows the suffering. He knows the hurt. He wiped down every tear that, that ran down your face day in and day out. He is your comforter. He is your protector. He is your provider. He is your everything. He is your rock. He is your refuge. He is your, he is your protector. He is your love. He is your life. He is the breath that you breathe, the air that you inhale in each and every day. Our God is so awesome. He is so mighty. He has it going on just like that. So that's why we depend on him. That's why we rely on him, my brothers and sisters. 
And Father God, I just believe today, God, that your presence is so real. Your presence is moving through this place right now. I allow your love to touch your daughters right now in the way where they need to be touched. I allow your love to touch and maneuver through your sons the way that that love need to be touched and maneuver through him. Father God, you have an open invitation. You're invited right now on your YouTube channel, right now on your platform. Father God, you have an open invitation. You're invited into your daughter's home, into your daughter's life right now. Father God, you have an open invitation. You're invited into your son's homes, into your son's life right now. Holy Spirit, that's what we need you. You are a comforter. You have an open invitation. You're invited right now on Jesus' YouTube channel, on this platform right now. Holy Spirit, you have an open invitation in my sister's home, in my sister's life. Holy Spirit, you have an open invitation in my brother's home, in my brother's life right now. Oh God, we depend on you. Oh God, we rely on you. Oh God, you are our answer. You are key to our problem. Oh God, we just lift you up tonight. This afternoon, this morning, wherever you at in the world. And God, we just glorify you. We magnify you. And we shout out your holy name. Because you are everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. Just like praise is an everyday thing. Praying is an everyday thing. Repentance. It's also an everyday thing too. And the reason why we got to repent because we depend on Jesus. We rely on him because we need him. The, rain, the main reason why we repent is because we all fall short. Every last one of us. We all make mistakes. Every last one of us. We all fall short of his grace and his mercy. Every last one of us. Every last one of us do it. There's not one human being on this planet called Earth can say that they are perfect because they're not. We fall short every day. We make mistakes every day. Every day we do this. Not some days, but every day. We fall short of His grace and His mercy every day. That's why repentance is also an everyday thing too. So if you can't keep it real and be honest with Jesus, you can't keep it real and be honest with nobody because he already know what you're going to do before you did it. He already know what you're going to come out your mouth and say before it even come out of your mouth. He already know. He know the thoughts that's already been played in your head before you even thought about doing it. He already know. So why are you trying to hide it from him? Why are you trying to sweep it up under the rug from him when he already know and the only thing you're going to do is ask Jesus to forgive you? So I need my keep it real brothers right now. I need my keep it real sisters right now to join me in repentance, if that's okay. Heavenly Father God, I just come before you peacefully and humbly right now today in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you for this day. I thank you for this opportunity. Father God, please forgive me and all my sisters and all my brothers for every anything, Jesus, that we've done wrong in the sight of your eyes. Father God, please forgive me all my sisters and all my brothers for every anything, Jesus, that we had in our heart that was not part of you. Father God, please forgive me, all my sisters and all my brothers, for every anything, Jesus, that we had in our mind that was not part of your Father's will. Please forgive us, Jesus. Wash us clean today, Jesus. Purify us through your blood right now today, Jesus. Wash us as white as snow right now today, Jesus. Oh God, I want to say thank you right now today for forgiving us for our sins. Thank you, Heavenly Father God, for not remember our sins anymore. Thank you, Father God, for giving us a second chance. Thank you, Father God, for giving us a clean new slate. Thank you, Father God, for understanding. Thank you, Father God, for hearing us out. You didn't have to do it, but you did. And we want to give you thanks. We want to give you praise. And we want to give you glory. In your holy, precious, mighty name. Amen and amen. Father God, it's something in my spirit I got to tell you. It's something that's been moving through me all day. It's something that's continued to electrify me every time I think about it. It stays on my heart all day long. It stays on the fruit of my tongue and the fruit of my lips each and every day. And God, I just can't wait to tell you how much I love you. I can't tell you how much I need you. So Father God, I just can't keep it in to myself anymore. I gotta let you know one thing. 
I can't thank you enough, Jesus. 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 I can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I glorify you the way I do. Because I can't thank you enough. That's why I magnify. That's why I shout out your holy name the way I do, Jesus. Because I can't thank you enough. That's why I'm in love with you the way I am, Jesus. Because I can't thank you enough. That's why I put my heart into you every day, Jesus. Because I can't thank you enough. 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 Glory, hallelujah. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. And if you're ready for God's word, let the church say amen. But let Jesus know right now that you can't thank him, that you can't thank him enough. Can I keep it real with you today, my brothers and sisters? Can I be honest with y'all? It's something that's been replaying in your mind lately. It's something that you've been wrestling with for a long period of time. It's something that you've been asking Jesus for, but Jesus has not responded to you. And you wonder why the same thing can be playing in your mind. You wonder why you keep wrestling with the same thing. And you wonder why, why Jesus has not responded, because he's telling you, you know what you got to do. You know the decision that you got to make. You know what you got to do. And you're wrestling with it, because you don't know if it's the right thing. But you know deep down in your spirit it's the right thing to do. You know you got to make this decision. Why continue to hold on to dead weight when it's dragging you down? Why continue to hold on to garbage when you need to throw it away? Why continue to be with someone who really don't care about you, who don't love you? You can't make nobody love you, my brothers and my sisters. But you're still holding on to that. Thinking that person never changed their mind. You can't make that person be faithful or loyal to you when you know that person not faithful or loyal in the first place. But you're still holding on to the garbage. You're still holding on to the dead weight. You're still holding on things that is not prospering you. It's not helping you. It's not motivating you. And you know what you got to do. Sometimes making a decision is the right decision. Sometimes walking away from something or someone is the best thing, the best move that you can do. And you know it's time. You know it's time because you think about it all the time. You wrestle with it all the time. And you're still asking Jesus for a sign. And Jesus said, you know what you need to do. Jesus wants the best for you, my sisters. He wants the best for you, my brothers, and especially in marriages. It's only two ways out of a marriage, death and adultery. And if your husband or your wife is not dead yet, but your husband or your wife continue to cheat on you on an everyday, daily basis, do you actually think that Jesus still wants you to continue to be in that marriage? I just got to be honest with somebody. Do you actually think that Jesus still wants you, my brothers and sisters, for you to continue to be in a marriage when you know that person is not faithful, he or she is not loyal, and they continue to cheat on you and it's dragging you, it's hurting you. I know that you don't want, you don't want no divorce. We all don't, because that's that promise that we made to God. That's that vow that we made to God. But it is saying in the Bible that you can get out of a marriage on adultery. Why continue to stay with him why continue to stay with her when you know they're going to cheat on you? Why continue to stay in a relationship when you know they're going to continue to abuse you and dog you out and not help you? Why continue to be friends with a friend that is not even faithful or loyal to you? Do you actually think Jesus still wants you to hold on to that? That is considered dead weight. That is considered garbage. And I know that you knew that person for quite some time. And I know it's going to be the hardest thing that you have to do. But you know deep down in your heart, deep down in your spirit, that you have to make the right decision. 
You already know what you want to do, but you're still holding on to it. Like it's going to change today. Like it's going to change overnight. You can't make a person change. You can't make a person want to be faithful or loyal to you. You can't make a person want to keep it real with you. You can't make a person who want to, who don't want to love you. You can't have a person who's going to continue to cheat on you and manipulate you and do you wrong. You cannot continue to hold on to that garbage because that's what it is, my brothers and my sisters. You know what you have to do. It's already there. But you're still fighting it. For what? The only thing that you're doing is beating yourself up. You're making it worse. I know it's a hard decision. I know it's a hard pill to swallow. And it's not easy. I had to make a decision like that. It wasn't easy for me. It was hard. The more I thought about it, the more I thought about it. The more I was thinking about it, the more I was wrestling with it. The more I was wrestling with it and thinking about it, it was also draining me too. It was making me tired. I didn't want to do it. But I felt like I had no other choice. I felt like God wanted the best of me. I knew he wanted the best of me. I knew that God did not want me to continue to be in a situation that is going to continue to hurt me. It's not helping me. It's not motivating me. But it's, it's hurting me more than it's uplifting me. And the God that I serve, the God I praise, my Father, Abba Father, I know that he wants the best for me. So when I made my decision, I made sure I prayed very thoroughly on my decision. And the more I prayed on it, I prayed on it, I prayed on it. I even fasted on it. Yet I never got an answer from Jesus. So I knew then I had to make my decision. I knew then I had to make a move. I knew then I knew it was the right thing to do because not only did I have to make the right decision, and I knew it was the right decision, I also saw evidence. So by me seeing evidence, that made my decision more clear to me that I had to make that decision. Because if I didn't, the only thing it was going to do was run me down. The only thing it was doing was holding me down. The only thing it was doing was dragging me, but I was holding on to the dead weight. I was holding on to the dead garbage when I actually knew that I needed to move on with my life. I had to move on. It's like I was still stuck in quicksand. But I had to wait out of the quicksand. And the only way that I can get out of that quicksand is make that decision. I had to make that move because I knew what I had to do. I knew it. I knew it right here in my gut. God gave every last one of an intuition. And your intuition is telling you what you need to do right now today, my sisters. Your intuition is telling you right now today, my brothers, what you need to do. You know you got to make a decision. Sometimes we hold on to things we know we should have we let go a long time ago. Some of y'all hold on to a job that you should have let go a long time ago. Some of y'all hold on to that alcohol bottle you should have let go a long time ago. A lot of y'all hold on to a pack of cigarettes that you should have let go a long time ago. Some of y'all hold on to the weed that you don't want to get high no more, that you should have let go a long time ago. Some of y'all hold on to the pills and the crack and the heroin and the prostitution when you should have let go a long time ago. Whatever it is that you holding on to that you know you should let go, it's considered trash, it's considered dead weight. Just let it go. Let it go today. I don't know who God is talking to. I don't know who he is preaching to. But he wants you to be set free from that mess. Are you ready to be set free today, my sisters? Are you ready to be set free today, my brothers? And the only way that you can be set free from something that you know deep down in your heart and spirit is no good is by making a decision. When you make your decision, don't feel bad about it. It's going to release you from that prison that you've been in. It's going to release you from that jail cell that you've been trapped in. you got to release yourself from all that pain, that hurt, 
that suffering and all that garbage, all that mess, you got to set yourself free from that. You already been trapped in it for quite some time. And it's like you don't got comfortable being trapped in the closet. Like you've been trapped in that mess. You've been trapped in that storm. And you feel like there's no way out. Yes, it is a way out. It's called a decision. In your, in, in, in your decision, you know the move that you got to make. You know what you got to do. Just stop fighting. Stop holding on to it. It's not going to hurt you. Don't look at it like God is going to punish you or be upset because that's what I was wrestling with for a long time. I felt like that God was going to be mad at me. I felt like that God was going to punish me and try to set back and not as I, I kept continuing to seek the Lord on the situation. And the more I, could, I continued to seek him, the more he was giving me clarity. The more I was, I was able to continue to praise and pray through it by seeking him in this kingdom. He was giving me confirmation on the decision that I had to make. And once I made my decision, I felt like I was at peace with my decision. I felt like I was not locked up no more. I felt like I was not in that quicksand no more. I felt like I was not trapped in that closet no more. And I didn't look back. I just said, I'm released now. I'm free now. Let me flap my wings now. Because I knew my God wanted the best for me. No, I did not want to make that decision. No, I did not want to just, I did not want to go against God neither. But I know God didn't want me to be in that mess neither. I know God didn't want me to be trapped in that prison cell neither. I know God wanted me to be happy. I know my God wanted me, he wanted the best for me. So yes, I had to make that decision. And I never regretted that was the decision that I made. Because I knew it was not going to help me. I know the more I continued to hold on to it, it was only dragging me deeper and deeper into that quicksand. Until I said, I got to release myself. I got to release myself. Tell yourself right now, you have to release yourself from that pain. You got to release yourself from that suffering. You got to release yourself from that hurt. You got to release yourself from that abusive relationship. You got to release yourself from that person that's continued to cheat on you and do you wrong. You got to release yourself from that person who's not been faithful and loyal to you. You have to release yourself. Are you ready to release yourself right now? Can you please turn your back to 1 Chronicles 17. And we're going to read verse 2. 1 Chronicles 17. And we're going to read verse 2. And if you have your Bibles open, let the church say amen. Nathan replied to David, Whatever you have in mind, do it, for God is with you. Whatever's in your mind right now, on your decision making, and it's been there for a long time, God is telling you, I'm with you. That's why he's not answering you. Because he's telling you. He's showing you. He showed you proof. He showed you evidence. Make your decision today. And know for sure, know for certain that our God is with you. You know what you need to do. Make your move. Release yourself from that hurt. Release yourself from that from that burden. Release yourself from all that trauma that you have went through over and over again. Don't beat yourself up about it. Don't even feel bad about it. That decision that you're going to make today, my sisters, that decision that you're going to make today, my brothers, is going to be the best move that you ever made in your life. The point I'm making right now today, you know what you have to do. You know what you have to do. You ain't got to think about it no more. You ain't got to pray about it no more. You know what you have to do. It's right there in front of your face. You don't have to be scared about it. You don't have to be nervous about it. Take the first step. And just know that God is with you. He's going to protect you. I know it seems scary. 
Trust me, I know. I was in that same boat. I was in that same situation as you, my brothers and sisters. Until I noticed me, God said, I'm with you. Whatever was in my mind. Because God already knows what you think. He knows your thoughts. And he knows deep down in your mind that you can make that decision today. That you got to make that move today. You know what you have to do. Don't feel bad about it. Because the only thing you're doing is you're releasing yourself from all that trauma, from all that trouble, from all that hurt, from all that pain, from all that crime that you had went through season after season. Nobody realized the hurt and the pain that you was going through. But you and God. And it's time for you to make that decision. And you know what you have to do. And if you know God is talking to you, you know this word is for you. Give God some thanks and praise and glory in the house of the Lord right now today. Can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life, to guide us, direct us, use us. I believe right now today in the mighty name of Jesus, but I was praying this simple little prayer, that God is already working everything God in our life right now today. And if you ever want to get in contact with me, leave me a comment. My YouTube channel is Wilder Sky LT. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek him. Always honor him. Always keep your eyes focused on Jesus because he is the author and the perfecter of your faith. Always continue to trust him. Always continue to pick up your crosses and follow Jesus. Choose faith over fear. Always continue to pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter if you know them. It doesn't matter if you ever seen their face. Prayer help and prayer change things. I'm always going to continue to keep y'all in prayer, my brothers and sisters. The only thing that I ask y'all guys to do for me is continue to keep me in prayer and keep me lifted up to. I'm serving in the cell too. I love y'all. Stay blessed. In Jesus' name, amen.